not to our life. I say good morning because this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Amen. If you just tune to this Facebook page, this is the Apostolic Church International Canada, 168 Reserve Boulevard. And on behalf of the Presbytery and the Church, I bring you greetings and I welcome all of you and all viewers watching today's Sunday service through our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible makes us to understand that each day is a gift to begin with prayers and even us, you are watching me right now wherever you are, we want to begin to give reverence to the Lord Jesus, we want to begin to give reverence to Jesus, we want to give him all the praise that he deserves, we want to thank him for what he has done. You know what Jesus has done for you. He's indeed an awesome God. He's indeed the lily of the valley. He's indeed the great that I am. So as we lift our voice wherever you are, you want to join me to sing, I am a sapo on the edge of Yeah. 
is about to do in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will continue by reading our scripture this morning. And uh, I will say the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Wherever you are watching from, you are a Christian soldier. You are a warrior. And as a warrior, one of your weapons is your Bible. You need to have a Bible. Wherever you Yeah. 
this. Now is the time. This is the moment where God is about to come. The word of God is a treasure that produces a great riches. I for those who depends on God's words. It's a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our mouth. The word of God is about to come. And right now, wherever you are, what you use two minutes and close our eyes.
in spite of what you see it today, there is going to be divine supply for you. Or God has made the provision for there to be divine supply for you to be able to tap into, for you to be able to access. Hallelujah. And so, fear not. We know that fear is from the devil. Because the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and of sound mind. We also know that fear is basically something that the devil uses to cause us to step away from, from, from God. The challenge or the charge to fear not is a command. I want you to put this in your mind. The charge to fear not is a command. And anytime someone commands you about something or advises you to take a position, hallelujah, anytime someone tells you, watch out, or sit here, or do this, it means that there is a provision for you to be able to maintain the position that he's calling you to. And so God has commanded us to not fear. It means God has given us the provision, hallelujah, the supplies to be able to exist in the times that we are in, even without fear. Hallelujah. And this is the God we serve. Our scripture is going to be taken from Verse chapter 17, verse the verse 12 to 16. Hallelujah. And continue to pray for me wherever you are. Amen. First Kings chapter 17, the verse 12 to 16. Excuse me. And 
right now. And someone may ask why you are so hopeful, why you are so audacious in your ability to come before God and see His face for the birds of birds. Are we not all living in the land as we see it now? What makes you think that as for you, you will be able to ask God to provide for you in spite of what everyone is facing? Hallelujah! What makes you think that you live somewhere else apart from where everyone else is living? What makes you think that no matter what is happening here right now, the 
know the face of God. Hallelujah. And David said in Psalm 27, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord and behold his beauty all the days of my life. Dwell, hallelujah, knowing the face of God and dwelling in the presence of God means waiting. Knowing the face of God and dwelling in the presence of God is rehearsing his hand so much that you know that, you know that, you know that he is the one who brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he has made you a royal priesthood. One able to declare. Hallelujah. One able to declare and to intercede. Hallelujah. You need to know the face of God. And because of that, Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable to his death. Paul knew the face of God. Paul knew the face of God. When you know the face of God, you listen to him continually. And you know where he's taking you. And you know where he's ordained for you. When you know the face of God, you spend time in his presence. You wait to listen for what he's telling you to do. Oh, Elijah knew the face of God because he was a man who stood before the face of God. You need to know the face of God. You also need to know your position in Christ. Hallelujah. You need to know your position in Christ. Elijah knew his position in God. He knew that he could make declarations and they would come to pass. He knew where God had placed him. And the Bible says that, like I was saying over and over again, he said that stand there for your position in the limit where we now have been set free. The Bible says that it was for freedom. Hallelujah. It was for freedom that we have been set free. Hallelujah. That is your position in Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you are a new creator. All things have passed away and all things have become new. That is your position in Christ. The Bible says that these signs will follow them that believe in his name will cast out demons and take out separate. That is your position in Christ. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that says you will decree a thing and it will come to pass and light will shine on your path. That is your position in Christ. Know the face of God. Know your position in God. The third thing for you to be able to do to receive of divine supplies is to be obedient. Hallelujah. Is to be obedient. When God told Elijah, rise up and go to the brook chariot, he was not disobedient. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews that the Israelites were made captive even on the desert because of disobedience. God wants you to be able to say yes. Quickly. Hallelujah. Elijah, the moment God told him, get thee up and go to the brook Jericho, he didn't wait. He didn't ask any further questions. He just rose up and he went. Hallelujah. 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 And it reminds me of what the Israelites who were fishermen at the time. Hallelujah. Waiting and looking for fish to feed their families. Hallelujah. And they couldn't find anything. And Jesus came on the scene and he said, Cast your net again. And he said that we've been trying all night. We've not caught anything but by and at your word, 
we will cast our net and they receive of divine supplies when they cast their net, they obey. Hallelujah. Maybe you will be trying to keep healthy. Maybe you will be trying to cast your net all this while. Oh, and God is saying, cast it. And you are not receiving any fish. And you are not receiving any divine supply. Today, I want you to tell God, but I saw where. Open the door. 
your love is very little. The whole power in your friendships is very little. The encouragement you have, and you believe that you don't have to give any more to God or anyone to anyone. And so you want to go and eat the last hope that you have. You want to go and eat the last morsel of bread that you have. Because of that, you've held your hands tied. You don't give. You don't pray. You don't worship. You do nothing. He's saying that the little hope you have, give it to me all days and see that the Lord is good. Open the door ever so slightly. And the Bible says, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. Hallelujah. He is the one who will step in. If you open the door ever so slightly, all taste and see that the Lord is good. A preacher that I listened to made this illustration and I think it bears repeating. He said that when you go to, let's say, a food court and you go to the Chinese side of the food court and you want to go buy something, maybe food to eat, maybe sweet and sour chicken or maybe fried or corn or whatever the case may be, they will take a small toothpick and then take a little one for you. Hallelujah. And ask you to taste it. Hallelujah. And by the time you taste it, you'd realize that you are now shedding out $20, $30 to buy the same thing that you tasted. You know why? You tasted it. And you realize it was good. All taste and see. So he asked the woman, give me just a little. You make the cake for me. Just a little. And then see the salvation of the Lord in your life. Taste. You see, the goal of divine supply is relationship. Everything that I have mentioned here is about relationship with God. Hallelujah. We might not see it that way. The reason for the virus, the reason why there is luck in your life, the reason why there is fear in your life right now is because we drifted so far away from God. And God needed to separate the wheat from the thirst. He needed to separate the sheep from the goats. And maybe you are a sheep in the presence of God, living in this world, facing the same situation as everyone faces. You see, and he's asking you, yes, I know you live here. But even as his wife said that we live in the world, but we are not of this world, he's saying that I have created divine supplies for you. I just need for you to recognize this. Come see my face. Know your position. Be obedient and then taste me. Hallelujah. Taste of me. Taste of me. One thing about divine supplies is you get back what you give. If you give, you call a sister who is sick and you pray for them. God is going to supply divine help. If you buy foodstuffs for someone else, God is going to give more foodstuffs to you. But the most important thing is if you open your heart, hallelujah, and give God your heart and spend time in his presence. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, 
The point of all this is for you to come closer. Come closer. Come closer. This is the point of everything. Hallelujah. There's nothing you will receive that is not from God. This is the point of it all. This is the point of it all. He's asking you to come in. Yes, you need health. Yes, you need money. Yes, you need personal protect, protective of the equipment or PPEs and they say, yes, you need encouragement. Yes, you need a supply of hope. Yes, you need a supply of mercy. Yes, you need a supply of grace. Yes, you need a supply of everything. Yes, you know what to know that it's going to be well. Yes, you want the encouragement. Yes, you want hope. He says, taste and see. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the more you see his face, even in the times that we are in, the more he will reveal himself more and more to you. Hallelujah. More and more to you. You see, it's a transaction. What are you willing to give up? Hallelujah. Taste just a little. He says that buy for me ointment from your eye if you are blind. And I will open your eyes. You are just applying ointment to your eye just to suit the pain momentarily. He said that you come. The last muscle of supply that you have that you want to use to buy your own ointment, come buy it for me and I will open your eyes. Buy for me raiment and I will cover your nakedness with white raiment. All this and see that the Lord is good. What are you willing to give up? And the more you go before his presence, the more he reminds you of where you came from. The more you go before his presence, the more he reminds you of how little you are. The more you go before his presence, he will tell you, I will be with you even to the ends of the world. And I am with you in all things. You are more than conquerors. The more you go before the presence of God, the more he reminds you that you are the head and not the tail. The more you go before the presence of God, the more he reminds you that you are the head and not the tail. That you will not lack any good thing. Hallelujah. Oh, test and see that the Lord is good. Wherever you are, I want you to stand on your feet. The goal is relationship. You will have endless supply. The Bible says, Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Endless supply of water. Your thirst will be quenched forever. But you just have to taste and see. The Bible says that a tree, if it is cut, hallelujah, and if the roots remain, it does not need much to sprout again. It just needs the scent of water. Today, I want you to rise on your feet at the scent of the water of the Holy Ghost. It's now a mess today. And I want you to start praying.
In the name of God, the Father, the Son, 